Welcome to the Hillsborian Historian. The topic is the class of 1932 and they do not have a yearbook, but they do have a huge edition of the red and black newspaper, much like the commencement issues of two decades earlier. The so-called 32 special was dedicated to building superintendent Archie McCurdy, who was always helping the Big Red out. Around this time, Spalding Fountain was moved from the center court to the front of the auditorium. In August 1931, Principal Spalding was finally seeing the beginnings of a junior college. He had also gotten permission to use Hillsborough High School as the home of this new college. On October 1st at 7 p.m., registration for this new college would begin in the lobby of the auditorium at Hillsborough High School. High school girls with typewriters were waiting to help the college students fill out forms under the soft lights of the auditorium lobby. However, at 7 p.m., no one arrived. At 7.15, the girls continued to talk in hushed whispers as no one showed. At 7.30, still no one showed, and a sense of depression began to set in. Principal Spaulding tried to keep everyone's spirits high. But then, at 7.40, voices could be heard approaching from Central Avenue, and soon dozens of students were registered in Tampa Junior College. Shortly thereafter, an assembly for the college was held in the library, located on the second floor across from the auditorium. This junior college eventually became the University of Tampa. For its colors, it chose those of Plant and Hillsborough black, red, and gold. Today, the University of Tampa embraces the red and black and uses the gold sparingly. While college courses took place in the evening, during the daytime, the high school continued as normal. And the annual Turkey Day football game was soon approaching. Journalist Red Newton, fearing reprisal, declined to make a prediction on the outcome of the game. He was also dismayed at the cost to taxpayers concerning the pranks between the two schools. Here we can see the boys baseball team and the girls baseball team. The class play was the Admiral Crichton about a group of people stranded on a desert island. The orchestra that year was actually featured on the radio on WDAE. Alexander Simonette was the busboy in the cafeteria and quite probably the first African-American to have ever worked at the Big Red on Central. This is the custodial staff and we can also see Mrs. Lowry, secretary to the principal. Notice the beautiful candlestick phone behind her. Despite the hardships of the Depression, the staff of the Red and Black would see their newspaper ranked first in Florida. Here is a cartoon showing the machinations they had to go through to get the 32 special commencement edition of the Red and Black printed. In May, the busy Principal Spaulding decided not to run for county superintendent. On June 2nd, the class of 1932 graduated in the auditorium on a stage covered with flowers. Speaking of flowers, it's time for me to leave. Please take care of yourselves and to keep up with all my HHS videos, subscribe to my channel, and as always, Go Big Red!